I wake up to tell myself, even if the world was over and you were the only survival answer, you would have still done something. Do it. कोई भी खत्म हो जाए मैं नहीं मरूंगी मुझे जीना है मैं कुछ बनूंगी आई थिंक सन्यास वन आई गेट माई सॉन्ग आई गेट टू सिंग एट कोक स्टूडियो पाकिस्तान आंचल कंसिस्टेंसी एंड परसिस्टेंसी कोक स्टूडियो पाकिस्तान आई थिंक बाई फार हैज हैड माई हार्ट फॉर ईयर्स and welcome to the wit chat show i have the very very talented archal shrivastava with me here first year huge welcome <laughs> i have to tell you your story also why it is inspiring is because everyone is caught up in this 9 to 5 or their corporate jobs and you dared to sort of let go of it after 9 years to sort of pursue what you really like yes. was that decision difficult archal I didn't think about it at all. Had I thought about it, it would have been difficult. I think I just let go of feelings and I moved on. And when you told everyone around you that, listen, I am quitting my job. No, I just said I am available now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have work. <laughs> I can sing at all times. That's a way, very good way to put that. Put See it. what? What else did I have to do? Yeah. I only knew that I cannot sit, crib, cry. Yeah. I only knew that I had to move and rush and tell people that hey, let's sing. Yeah. But like I was reading, you were always interested in music, and you did train for it since childhood. Then why not go for something when uh, my? I mean, why not pursue music from the very beginning i mean why why did you go for a corporate job at all yeah the family that i come from is a very typical 9 to 5 sort of a corporate job trending family they made sure that i do my mba in international business and marketing wow. i sit in my placements i get through my college placement and then i was certified as a good child yeah so not doing a job was not in the option cards. that was yes. not an option yeah. so i had to do everything i did try my level best to do as much that i could do in music alongside my job yeah but i think uh, oh, so for the longest time for i think about 1 one, one and a half two years i didn't tell my parents or family they read it in the papers they Then read you it in quit yeah you don't tell them <laughs> wow <laughs> I I was like oh my god mujhe jaydad se dakhal kar de <laughs> No I couldn't tell them I was I was only concerned that how they are going to react yeah I thought that they'll you know they'll go under depression they'll think I can't do anything yeah. they think they'll think that oh my god ab iska kya hoga but uh, so I didn't tell them anything but my dad read it and he said isne naukri chhod di hai <laughs> this is such a filmy story you know that your parents find out about your quitting about you quitting your job on in the newspaper yeah but that's good was i mean you took that step and look at you now but you know especially when you start off after a point i mean in your in your early 30s um to be a musician out there um it comes with its own challenges what were the kind of challenges that you personally faced which was like which was a revelation that oh ye industry mein aisa bhi hota hai because it's a it's a different world when you one step in industry was is as welcoming as any right and till date i've been singing and people are only commenting and complimenting the industry people i'm saying that they say you're only growing amazing anchal your voice is becoming so much better yeah. each day and i'm glad as for the family or the friends that i have um mm, barring few of the members <laughs> everyone has that <laughs> we all have it yeah my career was done 3 years ago yeah. they still think that i don't drink thanda pani i don't eat achar i don't have dahi and etc etc i have it all you you're breaking stereotypes in your own own sweet way yes, right i, I mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> but 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 to get that first project to sort of validate no one else but yourself that okay what you have chosen or following your heart is not going to go in waste yes. what was that moment for you um actually i quit because i got my first break oh lovely yes i was working uh, with the agency 
I was heading there, India for creative. When I got my first break, that too, somebody overheard me singing. I wasn't even there for an audition. Listen, everything with you is so filmy, Archer. Unique, yaar. I'm so approved. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I'm waiting for someone to just casually look at me like, listen, we are offering you like a... Yeah, Great yeah, this, package, exactly, you know? exactly this happened. No. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's a package. For you, it's a, it's a project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The package and the project just happened. So it did actually happen like this, that if you and I were talking and there were people there, yeah. and one of them was overhearing what I was... I, he overheard my conversation. He thought that I was... I would make a great singer. Oh, wow. And then he overheard one line of me singing and he called me, he took my number, called me the next day and he said, can you come for a dub? I said, uh, I could, but I'd never dub anything. Yeah. I would never, I never had an experience. I was shivering when I was singing Love Games title track. I wasn't even knowing if that was my final track. Six months later to that dub, I realized that I sang the title track and it's approved, it's not a scratch. That made me realize, that man made me realize that, oh, singing is my calling. Yeah. This voice is the unique thing that I have in me. Yeah. I don't have to just surpass this and do rest of the other things in my life. And so I took that decision that, no, I'll move out and I'll do this. But that's such a cool thing to happen. I mean, how often does that happen that you're just casually chilling and out of nowhere an opportunity comes by. That is why never stop believing. Never ever stop believing. Oh, never, never. What is that one advice though, uh, Archil, that you received from someone perhaps you look up to in the industry or someone either? I mean, you know, because advices to free me milte hain, har koi deta rehta hai. But kuch hi hote hain jo actually mein, you know, you, you would like to stick uh, and take a note of what is that one thing? For you? I think very early in my career when I was starting, uh, somebody told me, until consistency and persistency. Yeah. That's what's defi what defines the career of any artist. Yeah. Don't ask how many years, how many days, how many hours. Just do it if you believe in this art of yours. Yeah. I think till date and till the rest of my life, I will continue, I have never asked Bombay, I have never asked anybody and I don't ask, I don't like to question myself, my art, my timelines, my family, anybody. I will do my bit, if that's supposed to happen, I'll do it. If that's not supposed to happen, I'll take Agla Janam. <laughs> Finish it. <laughs> I like it. You were meant for this. I'm telling you. You were meant for that. I don't know why did you even think of going to a corporate job. My parents, like, like, yeah. like nine years of your life. They suffered. <laughs> Office <laughs> suffered because of me. <laughs> but I'm sure you were a great employee. I mean, to sustain yeah. in that field as well for nine years is not a joke. No, it's not. Uh, I got, uh, actually today in the morning only, my ex-boss, she texted me on Instagram. She was like, I'm going to send you a TED Talk. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, that's actually a sweet thing. Yeah, she's damn sweet. Uh, Manisha is the sweetest person on earth, I think. Sweetest boss one would ever want to work with. Yeah, but with, when it comes to singing and pursuing your passion and everything, there are always roadblocks. I mean, there are ways to look at it, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, your perspective could be looking at it as an opportunity to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Or you can look at it as a roadblock. How do you look at things whenever any, any such challenging situation comes your way. I get depressed yeah, as because I'm all, we're all humans and I've been really trying hard and whatever I've achieved till date it's a very hard yeah. ship and I, I don't deny that others don't do that. Yeah. I also have my journey everybody has their journey. I sit back the good part is I don't give up. Mm. I cry I howl. I uh, go under a silent mode for two to three days sometimes. Then I wipe off my tears. I like to write. I'm a very old school person. Journaling. So I, yes. So I journal. I would then write what's the wrong and the right that yeah. I'm supposed to do. And how will I fix these three days that I've lost on to? And that's, that's, I think, that's a very good quality in me that I have a never say never sort of an attitude. Yeah. Nothing looks to me as a roadblock, uh, yes, uh, for the time being or for a little while it looks to me like, oh my god, where am I stuck, why, who, nobody is happy to help me, nobody is doing yeah. anything for me, am I supposed to live life all alone, I've done so much all alone, I've helped so many people, now when I need them, they are not there, but then day after, or day, the day, yeah, the day next, after, yeah. 
I wake up to tell myself, even if the world was over and you were the only survival answer, you would have still done something. Do it. I start writing. So that's a mantra in life as well. I tell this to my parents or my family sometimes. कोई भी खत्म हो जाए मैं नहीं मरूंगी मुझे जीना है मैं कुछ बनूंगी that's that's actually very motivating by the way but you know uh, because your strength lies in folk music right um, I think that today in music it's an ever evolving uh, one it's an ever evolving industry in itself mm -hmm. but folk in general is losing its touch is what I feel mm -hmm. uh, because we are getting influenced by modern music mm -hmm. and EDMs and pop and everything right how do you keep yourself relevant in a phase which is constantly changing? I am uh, experimenting with the sounds that I can package my folk songs with. Mm -hmm. That sound is making me relevant in contemporary world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what my uh, uh, victory is. That's the reason that you and I are sitting and conversing. You're giving me so much of value here right now. Because it's the package, it's the sound. I'm very, um, I'm very sound with my sounds. Correct. So I'm bringing the right today's sounds in the songs that are folk, in the songs that are yesteryears, in the songs that nobody is listening. They've heard them. They were popular at one point in time, but they, the sounds are stale. Yes. I'm recreating, I'm rebuilding those sounds and I'm bringing and presenting the folk. And how much time does it usually take for you to sort of, if you want to work on a new piece of yours, like an original piece, how much time do you dedicate? What is your process like? Honestly, um, I work only once a day. <laughs> but we, we do pretend that <laughs> I'm working for the whole month and nothing is happening because guitarist is unavailable. Oh, I'm not able to do uke, I'm not thinking, I'm yeah. listening to sounds and no. One day only, the day I sit on it, that will be the day that I work on that song and it's done. Done. That's my process. Yeah. Because I don't think that it has to be perfected to the T. I, th I think I'm okay average, yeah. Tomorrow will be a better one. I am supposed to bring out many songs and more songs. I can do this. Uh. Average is my perception. Or average is your perception, not mine, maybe. And the perception is different for everyone. What is good yeah. for you might not be good for others. I mean, See, I'll tell you, my f most famous song, Kadi Aoni, I felt it was the most underrated average song of mine. And I didn't want to do it. My band members, they forced me. They, they actually continued to pester me for three, four days. Mm -hmm. Do the song, do the song, we'll record, we'll dub. We don't have to bring in outside people. We'll not produce it. We'll dub, we'll dub. I said, it's not a nice song, guys. They said, please do it. We'll just upload it. Let's people, let, let us not do anything. Let's right. not talk about it. It's the most famous song of mine. And it's one of my first indie songs. But that is what happens in most, especially in social media, you don't, like, until you put your work out there, you will really not know the potential of it because there's always takers. Yeah. There's always takers. Always, always. I, now, so the, it's very latest that I've learned, every genre has their Audience. listeners. Yeah. So, average is nothing. Just put it out and if you feel that it's not worked out, it's not as good, you can put, pull it down. Or you can amend it or you can do a better work tomorrow. But does the numbers sometimes bother you? Because like you said, social media is also a lot of validation comes from the numbers, the likes, the dislikes that you get. Does it take a toll on you? Oh, a lot of times nowadays. I think some, yeah, this is my that phase happening where I'm behaving a very teenage girl. <laughs> Because I'm surrounded by people who are only talking, oh my god, 50k hua? Yeah. 100k ho gaya uska? Oh my god. So, and I'm listening to it every day. Yeah. So I'm, uh, it's a good part also that it, it takes me back to my office where we used to tell this to our clients a lot that content or your product or your service is not the only thing. Yeah. Your marketing has to make that True. survive. Your marketing has to make it the hero. So my content is my song that I am creating and I'm putting it out. But yes, all this while I wasn't marketing it. So it's clearly, uh, it's not showcasing the numbers that the world is accepting. Now it'll showcase the numbers that the world is accepting because I have the marketing team in place and I, I happily get bothered if these numbers are not achieved. So I like the botheration that I got.
Yeah, I think it's also, I mean, another way of looking at it is that you push yourself enough to do better, better. in the next song. Yeah. Uh, but what are the, where do you look for feedback, Archil? Because, you know, in so, on social media, you get all kinds of feedback. And sometimes you're confused whether, because there are people who are literally loving it and there are, it's an extreme end. Yeah. And then there are people who, who hate it. How, how do you know that, okay, is the song really doing well? Mm. What is it that they like? What is it that they want me to change? How do you get that feedback? So, yeah, clearly Instagram and Spotify, they do tell me a lot because I keep reading what's my target audience and what are they liking and I do a little bit of stats reading. But uh, my soft corner goes to people who are very close to me. So there are three sets and genres of people that I look up to. Okay. One is my dad and I ask him, what did you like it? What did you like? What did you not like? Yeah. Because there's one audience that's his age that's following my kind of music because folk is also associated to them. Sufi is also associated to them. Yeah. Then it's my 10 years younger brother who's 24 now because digital is his game. Yeah. They are the leaders. They are the builders of this plat these platforms. So I keep listening to what he's saying. And Gen Z saying. consumes music in a very different way. Very different way, very weird way sometimes, yeah. very obnoxious way sometimes. True. He asks me to sing Chhap Tilak on ukulele, yaar. <laughs> Imagine, I would have had 20 people team by my side, three of them would be doing Taliya because it's a Kavali. And with a harmonium and he said, ukulele. <laughs> I'm like, main ukulele ke sab kaise ka He said, try, Didi. Try. Yeah, that's Gen Z right. for you. See? <laughs> so I do that monitoring also. That also happens in my house. And then I have my very, very, very dear friend Divya, who is our sort of age. Right. And she comes from a very thick background of Sufi, folk, ghazle, poetry. So she's my very big critic. She, uh, she herself runs a jewelry brand. Right. She's a custodian of a very popular Quirksmith jewelry brand that I keep wearing here and there. See, she's a true friend. I'm she's like promoting her. her in this video as well. That's a sign of a true friendship. I love her. I love her work. She's She doesn't need my promotion, I think. She's herself a very big No, everyone brand. needs promotion. Let's be honest. <laughs> we all need promotions. With she's her. a darling. Yeah. The humans, I like to connect with energies. Yeah. So she's one of those positive energy. I would repel if I see a false energy. Yeah. You don't even have to speak to me. So of she's course. that one of those very positive. Look at her and you want to say hi to her is kind of women she is. So these are my three uh, compartments that I go and I talk and I discuss my sound. My brother because we stay together in Bombay, yeah. he's my first and 98% of the feedback comes from him. Critics <laughs> come from him. <laughs> And only 2% is a 1% is daddy, 1% is the... Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, don't have the time. Mostly, it's also the Gen Z that is listening to all yeah. the music. So, you so kind of different. have to cater to their taste as well. Yes. While keeping the authenticity of your art alive. Huh. I mean, that's a struggle, I, I would It is a struggle, yeah. It's a struggle when we write as well. Like, you have to appeal to that target audience. Mm. But at the same time, don't... You can't lose what you have, right? I mean... The essence of it. I know, I want you to meet him, yeah. <laughs> Tell him this, I can't lose what I have. Okay. I can I can rectify it, I can yeah. remodel it. Yeah. Like I did Chhap Tilak yeah. and it's bombed very well. Yeah. It's so, it's done so well on my Instagram. I am surprised <laughs> that, oh my God, Chhap Tilak, I keep singing that song. And this has already made some 70, 80 K yeah. sort of a thing. Wow, and, that's And uh, cool. I like it. So I'm going to listen to him more, but not tell him. <laughs> We will not show him this video yeah, yeah, yeah. so that he knows Bad. that. You know. <laughs> but tell me, uh, another thing is that, you know, uh, with music, like I said, it's changing. And now, especially, everything is going global. Everyone is thinking about making, uh, taking their music to the global level, right? What is your thoughts on it? Because we see that today K-pop is so huge here. Not just here in India, we're talking global now. American music, pop music has bursted across. And I think it a lot to do again with Gen Z because they are the ones who are listening mostly to all of this. How do you make sure that your music caters to not just the Indian audiences but also to the global audience? 
This is my work in progress. And uh, this is actually the POA that I'm making every day, that I want to reach out to the global audience yeah. with the sound that I'm making, still with the songs that are core of the earth yeah. and our country. And because that's my unique identity. Yeah. So I am restructuring and working along with my teams, creating onto those sounds that will create a bigger yeah. picture in the universe of the global world. Yeah. That's what my agenda is. And as I said, it's work in progress. I'll take a little time, but I'll get there. I'm yet not there, that is sure. But you'll get there. But I'll get there because I'm. I have my heads on to it. So I'm. I'm but whose music inspires you, if I may ask, from the Western world or from the other parts of the world, apart from Indian music? Coke Studio Pakistan, I think by far has had my heart for years. This season, what they did, I think I. I have never ever heard somebody, never ever said that I'm a fan. But this season made me a fan of them. I used to listen to season nine a lot, a lot. And working with Heather, I worked with Heather because I was a very big fan of Coke Studio Pakistan, but this season, hands down. So I think nothing on earth for me, uh, what they do, what they do at Pakistan and what Coke Studio does at Pakistan, uh, I think for me it's, I will be very, I'll take sannyas when I get my song, I get to sing at Coke Studio Pakistan. We'll manifest it for you, it will happen for sure. Well, don't manifest sannyas for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will manifest that you get to get that benchmark that you've set for yourself. You'll yes. just, you will achieve that. But, you know, uh, lastly, I also want to know what is... What is that one song? Because, you know, uh, being an artist, there are phases that you go through where, you're, where you are very proud of what you do, but at the same time, you need validation. At the same time, you're looking for what next? Because an artist, your journey doesn't stop with one hit. It, yeah. you, keep, you need to keep up the momentum. So amidst all this, if I have to ask, how does Archil st distress herself? I uh, distress myself by listening to music. What is your one favorite song at this point? At this point in time, at this point in time, so, so it's very cliche to say, but I keep listening to my Madhanya a lot when I'm, uh, when I'm feeling low, because I think that is one song, not because I sang it. I sang it beautifully, yaar. I think I sang it so beautifully that I like it a lot. So I keep listening to that and it's been a persistent song of mine for uh, ever since Tapas got me to record it. And uh, that is one of my most favorite. But I really, really, really like to listen to um, To Jhoom from Coke Studio. Okay. So I, I do that listening. So I have like a playlist on Spotify that has To Jhoom, that has Madhanya, that has a couple of other songs from Coke Studio, that has Maine uh, Kitab uh, Likhi Hai, uh, uh, that has khat and uh, all of those songs. So these are my go-to songs. Wow. Javed Bashir Saab is my go-to person. I think uh, this, it's like a khazana that we have discovered when it comes to you and your love for music and everything. Mm -hmm. But love, but because your love for music is such a consistent thing in your life, right? Uh, if you had to describe Archil to me in three words, how would you do that? I am... Um... I am crazily mad, one word. I am um, Vidrohi Man. <laughs> Hindi pe aajati ho. <laughs> ah, koi bhi language, language is no barrier. Yeah. <laughs> I am clearly Vidrohi Man. And I love to live happily. Happiness is the only question that I want to achieve and die with. I want to die with a smile, with crores and crores of people by my side and uh, smiling, looking at me, smile. Wow, that's, that's what I want. That's a very great way of ending this chat, actually. <laughs> Happiness at the end of the day is ev what everyone is seeking and that's, yeah. that's amazing. Thank you so much, Archil. Pleasure is all mine. I hope that you keep doing amazing music and um, sort of take advice and feedback from your uh, brother who is helping you with all the Gen Z stuff. But please keep doing amazing work because we know that 
you know, it's very rare to see this kind of passion in today's time. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much for having me today. Now, I cannot let you go without you signing and commemorating this moment for me because obviously I have had so much fun chatting with you today. Thank so we need a signature of yours here. Wow, it feels like a coffee mark signature. Can I do oh, this? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. Now I know how difficult it is to sign. Yeah. That's Archer Srivastava with me. You're on the Witch Chat Show. I love every bit of it. Love every me. bit Thank of you it. So much. <laughs> Thank you. If you like my chat, please like, share, and subscribe to Witch Chat Show. You are.